previously on the Inca Empire. All right, Francisco, here's your room full of treasure just like you asked for. Now it's time for you to fulfill your end of the bargain and let me go. Unless, of course, you were just manipulating me to give you gold even though you planned to kill me all along and take over my now hypothetically leaderless empire. Uh oh. The Inca Empire. History's equivalent of getting a really bad start in civilization and then somehow winning the game. However, despite all their achievements, the Inca are perhaps best known for the spectacular collapse of their empire at the hands of just a few hundred Spanish. Except the Inca Empire actually didn't collapse and survived in the jungle for another 40 years. First, some background. <clears throat> The Inca were originally a small kingdom centered around Cusco, but one day they were like, what if we were bigger? And they conquered a massive empire up and down the Andes Mountains, building roads and cities along the way. But then, like a hundred years later, the Spanish showed up and were like, what if we were bigger? And they conquered the Inca Empire by killing its emperor and putting a guy named Manco in charge, but then they were really mean to him, so Manco rebelled, and it took like a year for the Spanish to beat him, but they didn't capture Manco, so now he's on the run from the Spanish. Make sense? Okay. Good. After this defeat, Manco decided that it would probably be a good idea to put some distance between him and the mustached Catholics, so he packed up his llamas and headed off to the east with some of his last remaining supporters. Now, it's important to remember that the Inca Empire was composed of many ethnic groups, many of which actually welcomed the Spanish as liberators. However, it didn't take long for some of these people to change their minds about their new friends. Look, you know that I don't like the Inca any more than the next guy, but I mean, are you really sure about these Spanish people? Definitely. I mean, they can't be worse than the Inca. <laughs> Alright losers, you all have to start worshipping this picture and naming your kids Pablo. Okay, I take it back. The Anti, who were the people native to the far east of the empire, weren't huge fans of all these shenanigans, so they set aside their differences with the Inca and invited Manco to come kick it with them. Despite this invitation, Manco decided to end his road trip prematurely and settle in the city of Vitcos, an Inca colony about 70 miles from the nearest Spanish garrison. To be extra sure that he didn't receive any uninvited Spanish-speaking visitors though, Manco took a page from American highway construction and destroyed every road leading to the city that would be even remotely convenient to the average commuter. Undeterred by this construction season cosplay, the Spanish rode out from their garrison in Cuzco with one impossible mission. Find Tom Cruise. I, I mean Manco. A and then kill him preferably in front of a large crowd. Miraculously, the Spanish troops were actually able to find a route to Vitcos and capture it after a brief skirmish. Manco was able to escape, but in his hurry to do so, he ended up leaving a certain child-shaped something behind. Um, d does gold usually cry like that? Disappointed by their lack of success, the Spanish indulged themselves in a civil war, a fun tradition that they had brought from home. In the meantime, though, Manco had escaped, so, um, hooray! After the sacking of Vitcos, Manco needed a new capital city that would be safe from the Spanish. And since it's a documented fact that white people melt in the humidity, he knew just the place to put it. It's the hottest, moistest place in South America. It's, you guessed it, Shakira's armpit. No, I'm kidding. It, it's the Amazon rainforest, but, but I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Once he was fully situated in the Amazon stronghold of Vilcabamba, Manco began a concerted guerrilla campaign aimed at harassing trade routes and just generally bothering the Spanish. Frustrated that their Amazon Prime deliveries now had three day shipping due to ambushes, the Spanish yet again rode out from Cuzco to pay a visit to their buddy Manco. After several days, some Inca snitch told the Spanish that Manco was actually nearby getting freaking lit at a religious celebration. Even better, he only had a few bodyguards with him. Manco heard about the Spaniards too though, but caught out in the open without his military, he'd be dead meat if he didn't do something drastic. Being the feminist that he was, Manco arranged local women on top of a mountain as cannon fodder, I mean to make it look like he had an army. He then waited for the Spanish to begin clambering up the slope before raffle stomping them with horses he had stolen. Of the 30 Spanish attackers, only two survived. Physically, n not socially. 
And now, a special report from KW News, Spanish news where all are welcome, except Jews, Muslims, and Protestants. With us now, we have the loser who was defeated by unarmed women and four horses. How are you holding up? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. This game of cat and mouse continued on for a few more years until 1539 when the Spanish finally decided to crush Manco once and for all. With the help of indigenous allies, the Spanish were able to locate Vilcabamba, but found the route to it blocked by a large wall. On this wall were Inca soldiers armed with Spanish arquebuses. These Inca gunners were able to hold off the Spanish for a while, but it wasn't long before some of them ran into a problem. Haha! -ha, say hola to that! Alright, now Frank, uh, show me how to reload this thing. Uh, Frank? With the Inca guns temporarily silenced, the Spanish were finally able to push through Vilcabamba's defenses. Once again, however, when the Spanish and their allies reached Manco's capital, there was no sign of Manco anywhere. Yet again, the rebel king had disappeared. Hey, what a coincidence, my dad disappeared too! After narrowly escaping Vilcabamba, Manco continued his guerrilla campaign against the Spanish, who were now too busy fighting each other to effectively retaliate. Spanish politics got so nasty that a few Spaniards even assassinated their leader, Francisco Pizarro. These assassins then fled into the rainforest and were granted asylum in Vilcabamba. After all, they could be useful political bargaining chips, and what harm could they be? With Manco, um, out of the picture, the burden of leadership fell to his oldest son, Seiri Tupac, a nice little nine-year-old but wait, a nine-year-old? Seiri's young age meant that the Inca had to be governed by regions for the next ten years. During this time, the kingdom ended its guerrilla campaign and sunk increasingly into isolation. This tentative stalemate lasted for about ten years until Seiri was finally tall enough to become emperor. However, instead of renewing military conflict, Seiri decided that it would be best to negotiate with the Spanish. In exchange for a promise of peace, Seiri agreed to convert to Christianity and move to a mansion out in the countryside. This smoothed out relations between the Spanish and the Inca for a while, but then Seiri died and screwed everything up! Manco's youngest son, Titu Kosi, then became emperor in 1560, 16 years after... Um... Yeah. Interestingly, Titu was the same baby that the Spanish had kidnapped all those years ago in Vitcos. However, he had escaped with his mother and now, shockingly, had a bit of a grudge against the Spanish. Titu immediately restarted the Inca's guerrilla campaign and even began organizing rebellions in other parts of the Spanish-occupied empire. This was obviously inconvenient for the Spanish, so they attempted to negotiate with him like they did with his brother. However, Titu wasn't buying it. He always acted interested, but then backed out at the last minute. Kinda like every girl I've ever talked to. Finally though, in 1567, Titu made a deal with the Spaniards where they promised not to invade Vilcabamba as long as the Incas started to let missionaries in. Titu was reluctant to do this because the last time the Inca let Spaniards into Vilcabamba, they assassinated the emperor, but these were just peaceful missionaries, so how bad could they be? Oh man, come on. Now, to be fair, the closest Spanish missionary was miles away from Titu when he died and likely had no involvement whatsoever in the emperor's death, but that's not how it looked to the Inca, who quickly apprehended the man and brought him into a house for <clears throat> questioning. Excelente! We just reached the top of Magic Mountain! Can you say mountain? Please don't kill me! No, that's not how you say mountain- OH MY GOD! Meanwhile in Cuzco, the Spanish were unaware of all this commotion and continued to send emissaries to negotiate with Titu, thinking that he was still alive. However, Titu was now very dead, and the new emperor, Tupac Amaru, was even less likely to negotiate than his predecessor. After a while, the Spanish noticed that the emissaries they sent to the Inca never seemed to come back, so they sent an extra one just to make sure they weren't going crazy. When this unlucky Spaniard got to the border of the Inca state, he must have been relieved when the Inca guards on the other side invited him over to chat and then hacked him into little pieces. 
Now with a definitive excuse for war, the Spanish amassed a force of 300 Europeans and 2,000 native troops and marched on Vilcabamba. Easily sweeping aside the small force sent to stop them, the Spanish and their allies quickly reached the city. However, once they got there, they found the place burned and abandoned. One Spaniard commented that the city looked so pillaged he thought the Spanish had already been there. Unsatisfied with this anticlimactic ending and the escape of the Inca leadership, the Spanish dispatched search parties to scour the jungle for the renegade Emperor Tupac. This'll flush him out. West side, bad boy for the last time, I'm not that Tupac. Wait, who are you guys? Thus, 40 years after Pizarro landed in South America, and 36 years after the quote-unquote fall of the Inca Empire, the last remnants of the official Inca state were no more. However, the Inca, as well as all their subjects, didn't disappear. They continued to interact with and influence the Spanish, slowly leading to the creation of the South America we know and love today. Yeah, seems about right.